Hey, what's going on folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Today I've got my 05 Honda Odyssey 3.5 liter Touring and I'm going to be replacing my valve cover gaskets today. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now before you get started on something like this, be sure that the vehicle is totally cool before you start. I would let it sit for a couple of hours before you even get into this. Let's go ahead and open up our radiator cap just to relieve any pressure that might be built up. And you want to use caution doing this, guys. Even though it's sat for two hours or so, there could, there could still be some pressure on it. And I just don't want you guys to get sprayed with coolant. So there's no pressure on mine. So we're good to go there. I'm going to go ahead and put this cap back on here. Now, it's never a bad idea to disconnect the negative battery clamp on your battery before you start something like this. Uh, that'll prevent you from accidentally starting it up and also accidentally shorting something out it's a potential so let's just go ahead and disconnect this make sure that doesn't happen now uh, you may need a code to turn your radio back on after you do that be sure you got that before you disconnect your uh, negative battery clamp should be in your owner's manual packet in your glove box and i'm just going to wrap this up with a rag just so i don't accidentally touch that post again with that clamp and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our engine cover our beauty cover right here and you can see you got this little screw right here. Just give it a 90 degree turn like so. Same thing on this side, 90 degrees. Once those are loosened like that, go ahead and give it a yank right there. And then pull up back here. And you may want to pull it up back there. And remove your engine cover. Now you can probably see I got a lot of dirt and muck around my engine or on my engine here. Um, it's really a good idea to clean all that up before you open up the engine or open up the intake manifold and the, uh, the valve covers there to prevent that stuff from getting down into the engine. You don't want to get that stuff in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take a blower and I'm going to blow my engine off as best I can before I start. Blow it off real good there. Now we need to remove our air inlet and the top portion of our air filter housing here. Let's go ahead and disconnect this sensor here. Push down on the tang while you pull, pull out on the connector. Go ahead and disconnect it from the air duct. Let's squeeze our hose clamp right there. Pull out on that hose. Like that. Release our hose clamp. Let's loosen our hose clamp on our air duct there. It's a 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and loosen our air filter housing. That's an 8 millimeter there. And one here. That's one up here. And one back here. Okay, once those are loose, you can go ahead and pull up on your air filter box. Put on the throttle body there. Let's go ahead and pull this thing up and out of the way. Now we're going to concern ourselves with taking the intake manifold off. We're going to start from back here and move our way that way and start disconnecting things from it. Right, let's go ahead and disconnect this here. I'm going to push down right there on that locking tang and pull out. See that locking tang right there? When you push down on that, it releases it and you just grab it by the connector and pull out. Let's go ahead and disconnect this hose. From the intake manifold squeeze your hose clamp together there now a little trick on this hose here and your other hoses uh, if you got some pliers like this and if you don't that's okay but if you got some pliers like this just take and put it around that hose there and just kind of gently rock that hose back and forth just breaking that seal on it and you're not damaging the, the hose in the process of doing that don't gouge the hose or tear into the hose while you're doing that you just want to break that seal up you see, I don't have any punctures or anything in it. You're just grabbing it and breaking that seal. So that's just disconnected. Let's go ahead and move on forward. All right, now we need to disconnect our hose going to the uh, the brake booster over there. And just squeeze your clamp. Move your hose clamp down. Go ahead and release that. Same thing on this one. Just kind of take and grab it. Just break that seal on it. Once the seal is broken, you can use your hand and pull it off the rest of the way. All right, and since we're back here, let's go ahead and start disconnecting stuff. Let's disconnect this here, push down on that tang, and pull up on the connector, like so. 
we've also got another thing to disconnect right here push down on that tang and pull up on the connector like so and we got one back here too push down on that tang right there pull out on the connector oh, that locked back on me poop there we go just like that and moving on to the throttle body here let's go ahead and disconnect our connector on it there's a little locking tang right there push in on it while you pull out on the the connector similar to the other one see that little locking tang in there all right let's go ahead and move on up here and we'll disconnect this sensor pushing in on that locking tang similar to the other ones all right, let's go ahead and disconnect this hose here squeeze your hose clamp together slide it down grab the hose and break the seal now I'm gonna remove this it's held on by two 10 millimeter bolts and you can't see the other one down there let me get a flashlight on it for you there you go so two 10 millimeter bolts we're going to disconnect that or uh, unfasten it and set it aside let go oh snap don't do that yourself there we go I'm holding a camera with one hand <laughs> And using my impact with the other so I fumbled a little bit there but try not to do that yourself set that to the side like that right there now this breather hose right here that goes to the back valve cover we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that from the back valve cover right there let's go ahead and loosen our hose clamp and throw tools everywhere in the process no problem <laughs> pull that back like that See if I can't yank this off barehanded. No, I'm gonna need my pliers. Pull that off the rest of the way there by hand. All right, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna take this plate off the top of the intake manifold. And by the way, guys, the method I'm, that I'm gonna be using is a method that I've learned from experience. This isn't necessarily by the book or by the manual. Uh, I would advise to listen to your manual above what I'm showing you here. I've gotten by with this and it served me well, but if you do it this way, do it at your own risk, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and start loosen, uh, loosening these bolts and we're gonna do it kind of in a uh, an outward spiral pattern. We'll start with this one, go to that one, 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 and then you get the picture. Kind of an outward spiral as we're taking it off. We're gonna do a quarter turn at a time and on each of them and then I'll take my cordless impact and I'll, I'll zip them off the rest of the way there and oh by the way um, guys it's probably not a good idea because we're gonna be opening up our intake manifold it's probably not a good idea to have tools and nuts and bolts and leaves and debris or whatever up here on your wiper cowl or anywhere close to this opening here if you drop something down in your intake and then it gets down into your cylinder because the intake valve is open by any chance that's bad news guys don't do that okay so be careful don't get anything into your intake manifold all right all right so a quarter turn at a time let's start with this one that one that one and yes i did pre-loosen these guys I'm, I'm holding a camera while i'm doing this so it's kind of hard to actually break them loose while i'm doing this these and set them off to the side somewhere in a safe spot don't lose these okay so all of our fasteners are taken out of that top plate there I'm gonna take a pry bar and I'm just gonna gently lift up on that right there same thing on this side gently lift up on it the seal is broken so now we should be able to just grab it and pull it right off like that okay at this point guys we have seven bolts three of which are up top here four of which are on the bottom here including right there we're not concerning ourselves with these three bolts okay guys so that's that's one of your bolts right there and then we got two nuts we got a nut there and then we got a nut here so we're gonna go ahead and in the outward spiral pattern just like on the uh, top there 
Uh, and, and the same disclaimer goes for this too, guys. Do this at your own risk and uh, use a repair manual above what this video has to say. But this has served me well. So we're going to go ahead and start here. Quarter turn. And yes, I did pre-loosen these. I can't hold a camera and loosen them at the same time. So forgive me. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Outward spiral. Just like on the top there. Alright, and those are 12 millimeter heads on those bolts and those nuts, by the way. And I'm just going to spin them off the rest of the way with it, cordless impact. And I need more. Take these bolts. Alright, now we need to uh, take our throttle body off. We've got four nuts that hold it on. And there's one right there that you can't see. I'm going to go ahead and take those off off camera. So we got our two nuts off up top here. And excuse me, the bottom ones were actually bolts that go on either side up underneath here. What you got to do is just take you a pry bar in between here. Just give it a little pry out like that. And by the way, we're not prying on this uh, plastic piece here. Uh, we're just prying on the metal portion of it. So let's go ahead and just pull it out just like so. And we're just going to let it sit there, just like that, okay? So in hindsight, guys, I probably should have unbolted my throttle body before I unbolted my intake manifold. You saw how it was wiggling around and stuff whenever I was uh, trying to unbolt it there. So uh, just FYI for you, do it before you unbolt all this stuff right here. It'll make it a lot easier on you. So now we got it all unbolted, and we're just going to grab right here. And you probably want to do it with two hands. Grab both sides of it and just pull the whole upper plenum off. Use caution right here guys. You can see I got a lot of dirt and soot and stuff uh, around this gasket right here. I'm going to take a rag and I'm going to clean that up real good. Trying not to get any of that dirt into these ports here. Do not get anything into those ports okay guys. Also uh, still my valve covers have dirt and stuff on top of them. You got to watch out for that. Don't let that get into your engine okay guys. So try the best you can to clean that up and to prevent any nasty stuff from getting into your engine. All right, let's go ahead and remove our uh, plenum gasket here. Let's pull straight up on it. All right, that's out of the way there. So we don't want anything going into our intake port. So I'm just going to take this towel. And I'm just going to cover up my intake ports just so I don't accidentally drop something down in there because uh, it can happen and it does happen. So just uh, try to watch out for yourselves. Do whatever you can to prevent yourself from making a mistake, okay? Now we're going to need to remove this engine wire harness, or this part of the section of the engine wire harness, from the front valve cover here. And we got two bolts that hold it on. These are two 10 millimeter head bolts there. We're going to go ahead and loosen those up and remove those bolts. Got to disconnect our coils. And all of these electrical connectors are very similar, and they disconnect very similarly. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect those. And I got two electrical connectors right down there. You can see how your wire harness kind of runs down the side there. We need to disconnect those, and I'm going to do that off camera. And just an FYI, uh, those connectors attach to a bracket that's held on by those two bolts there. You got a, uh, looks like a 12 millimeter or a 13 millimeter. And then a 10 millimeter below it, I just broke that front connector there that holds it to the bracket where that uh, plug goes in. The electrical connector attaches to the bracket there. So just be careful with that. Y'all might want to disconnect it by taking the, the bracket off first and then pulling it up so that you can get to that bracket and release the connectors from the bracket so that you don't break it like I just did mine. So just FYI, guys. All right, now we can just take our whole section of the harness and just set it off to the side just like that uh, next thing we need to do is we need to take our ignition coils out and they're held on by these bolts that have six millimeter allen receptacles so we need a six millimeter allen wrench and we need to unscrew those bolts there's three bolts that hold the coils on and the coils pull right out so i got my six millimeter allen wrench here loosen that up Pull that coil right out, just like so. 
get it off the side, and I'm going to do the same thing for the other two coils. I got all three of my coils out of the front valve cover, and I went ahead and took a rag and tried to wipe off any dirt that I might have had up top here, and I still got a little bit more. You should probably do a better job than I just did, um, but we want to go ahead and pull our dipstick out all the way. So we're about to pull the uh, valve cover off. Now you got uh, five bolts, two down here, and then three up top here. One two and then three so we're going to go ahead and loosen those up um, kind of in an outward spiral kind of a pattern you know just like just like we did everything else and uh, i'm going to do that off camera you get the gist we're going to loosen those up and take those bolts out and then we're going to take the valve cover off of the front head there okay so all five of our bolts are loose and we're going to go right up here in between the, uh, the head and the valve cover, there's just a slight opening there. We're not like jamming this in there or anything. We're just putting the head of that screwdriver right there, and we're just going to twist a little bit. We're going to loosen that uh, valve cover from the head there. It's kind of sealed on. So once we got it broken, we can then hopefully, that's what I'm probably doing a couple spots there. Going down here too. I'll get a little tug on that right there. You might have to pry out on it on a couple of spots there. Just go ahead and pull your whole valve cover off. And just FYI, whenever we were prying up on that valve cover, we were only in about that far. You don't want to gouge the mating surface right here to where your valve cover gasket won't make a good seal. You just barely stick your, uh, your screwdriver in there and just kind of pry up on it just to break the seal loose from the head. Okay, on this back valve cover here, I'm going to do my best to explain this because I can't be very visual as you can see I don't have a whole lot of room back there to stick a camera um, but anyway there's a ground strap that bolts to this bracket right here disconnect it this little 10 millimeter head bolt that goes right there and then you see you got this wire harness that goes across the top here this harness is attached to the valve cover with a 10 millimeter bolt right there you can just kind of feel along the back side there you'll feel the 10 millimeter bolt right there and then there's another one that goes right here. Let's go ahead and take those out. And then there's a bracket on your power steering hose that bolts to the top of the valve cover also. It's got a 10 millimeter bolt that goes in that too. So disconnect that also. And then you got to, by feel, your ignition coil uh, connectors, you have to disconnect them. They're right behind here. You gotta do that by feel. and then right down here there is a let's see if I can get this thing to focus well you can see your harness goes back here okay so you got that green clip right there that's all oily <laughs> uh, it's got a little locking tang and that little locking tang is right in the back here you gotta pull up on it and you see where it slides up on that bracket right there when you this thing slides up on that bracket that locking tang locks into that little hole right there to take it out pull up on the locking tang and then take you a long screwdriver or a pry bar and push this sleeve right off of that bracket there that way when that's disconnected from that bracket you can manipulate this harness a lot more and i don't think i'm going to take this thing out all the way i think i'm just going to let it sit there but I'm going to have to take my coils out. They're held on by the same bolts that the front ones was held on by. So we're going to go ahead and take those out and take my ignition coils out. I'm going to pull them up and out through that little hole right there. And then once I got that, this has also got five uh, bolts that hold the, the valve cover on. I'm going to loosen those up. And then I'm going to try to pull it up enough and pull it right out just like that. Well, as you can see, I was able to successfully get it out that way. Um, but it, it was a little tight, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Now it may help some folks if they disconnect these fuel injectors here and detach your harness from these brackets here so that you might have a little bit more room to raise that harness up, uh, get it out of the way. But uh, I was able to do it that way and it worked okay for me. It, it wasn't horrible, but it was tight. So like you see on the front here, I got a towel over this uh, head. You wanna put a towel over that head too. What I'm gonna do, um, as you can see, my parts are pretty nasty. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to the shop and uh, clean them up real good and uh, and bring them back and, and then we'll get started again. 
Uh, I know you probably won't have a parts washer available, and, and that's okay. You don't have to get them spick and span, but um, we've been neglecting our oil changes, and as you can see, it's, it's just plumb nasty in there. I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit. Uh, you can just use like brake clean to clean the uh, mating surface where the, the valve cover gasket goes into the, the valve cover there. Uh, that's the main part you want to get cleaned up there. So uh, back in just a moment. So I'm back from the shop and uh, I put these in the parts washer. They're still dumped up pretty good, but the back side looks, looks almost brand new besides the peeling paint and stuff. Now one other thing you want to concern yourself with, uh, this little mechanism right here. Um, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds it in. This is a, a place where, where a leak could occur, um, and your valve cover gasket kit may or may not come with new O-rings for this. One right there, one right here. I would suggest replacing these O-rings also, and uh, that'll prevent you from having a leak at that point right there. And you can see that it looks like this has been leaking because of all the paint being peeled off and such. So now what we need to do is even though I put this in the parts washer I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, some scotch bright heavy-duty scouring pads and kind of uh, clean the inside of this channel here where that uh, valve cover gasket sits in there and the same thing for the other other valve cover too so we're gonna be using these uh, scotch bright heavy-duty scouring pads in order to clean the mating surfaces between the uh, valve covers and the heads and uh, I bought that stuff with my own money by the way and this is not a commercial for Scotch-Brite I just think that these work great for this application so uh, the entire mating surface like on the back head here uh, anywhere where that gasket for the valve cover is going to mate up to that cylinder head you're going to clean that up really good with the scouring pad now this here uh, you'll notice you got a couple of clumps right here and also on the back side uh, of some RTV you're going to take a razor blade to that and clean it up real good. But before you do that, take a rag, a lint-free rag, and wipe the entire surface of this off. Uh, get any dirt and debris off that you can before you do that, before you use a scouring pad on it. Uh, always be careful to get the dirt to fall out this way, not into the engine. And you're going to do the same thing for this cylinder head too. You're going to clean that entire mating surface up all the way around there. Now you can see back here on these spark plug tubes, you got some dirt and grime on the very tippy top of it. On that one also. I'm just going to take the rag and just kind of wipe it off real good. And you're not going to get it perfect with the rag at first. So just wipe any grime and, and dirt and stuff off of those spark plug tubes. And do that for your front head also. Alright, now you see that little dollop of RTV you got there? I'm going to take a razor blade, just kind of shave it off like that. And you don't want to gouge the surface. We're just raking that RTV off right here at this point. Now, once you got it broke free from that surface there, push it off the side. Don't get that in your cylinder head. Now, just like you saw that on the front side here, you got one on the back side also, right? there that you'll need to do too and the front head doesn't have this problem all right now we're going to take our scouring pad just kind of scuff this surface up real good see we're getting rid of that residue and and grime and stuff and getting down to the bare metal that's what you want to get you want to get bare metal and we're not like gouging and, and scraping really hard this is only taking very light pressure so that's that's almost about perfect. So we're going to do this all around this whole area right here. Same thing for the back head. So I've been working just for a little bit. It doesn't take very much and very long to get this surface cleaned up really well. Um, I still got a little bit more work to do right around that area there. But you get the you get the general idea of what you need to see. It needs to be perfectly clean uh, plain metal all the way around where that gasket meets. Now for these spark plug tubes here, you know you got that black soot up there. We're going to take this scouring pad and we're going to do the same thing to it. We're just going to wrap it around that and just go back and forth with it and just work that black soot off right there. And you see I'm, I'm making some progress already so we're going to do that for all six of them including the ones back there. So yeah, just like you want this uh, mating surface to be clean like this and, and even more over that way you want your mating surface all the way around on that back head cleaned up the same way including the spark plug tubes so now we got our mating surfaces cleaned up on our front head 
and also back here on our back head you can see I got all that gunk up and stuff all the way around even back there and you may have to have a mirror and a flashlight to check the progress back there to make sure you got every bit of that residue and such up now what we're going to do is we're going to take a lint-free rag and of course this is not a lint-free rag this is just what I got right now sorry about that I would suggest you use a lint-free rag I got it soaked with brake clean and we're just going to take and wipe off the entire mating surface with brake clean that way we get any oil that might be left on there cleaned off we want a nice dry metal surface to mate up to and you can see these spark plug tubes here I did my best on them uh, however there's still a little discoloration but they are perfectly smooth all the way around if you can get yours better than that I would suggest it and uh, not only are we going to wipe things down right here including the spark plug tubes uh, but we're going to wipe things down back there with our uh, brake clean rag also the entire mating surface and by the way might I say guys uh, surface prep is probably the most important thing you can do on this project if uh, if you don't do a good job cleaning your surfaces there's a good chance it's going to leak and you did all this work for nothing so take your time get those mating surfaces cleaned up real good and make sure they're good and uh, uh, clean of any residue and any oil and now we need to replace all six of our spark plug tube seals on both of our valve covers there and we're going to use what's called a seal puller that's this little hook thing here we're going to put it right up in there like that we're just going to pry it out right, it took a little doing but we got that one out right there uh, be careful whenever you're pulling these out with your seal puller because uh, that, that is a nice sharp metal edge there you, you don't want to gouge that surface right there because you need that to seal up between the uh, valve cover and that seal there so that oil doesn't leak so use care not to gouge that you want to just simply pry out on that seal there grab the inside portion of that seal and pry it out without damaging your valve cover so I'm gonna do that for all six of them now we got all three of our spark plug two seals out on this valve cover here and all three out on that valve cover there and our holes are nice and clean uh, we got any foreign materials out of there before we're going to try to put these seals back in now you can install these backwards okay <laughs> now the concave part uh, goes towards you as the bottom of the valve cover is facing you there so because when you when you put this thing on it's going to go over the spark plug tubes like that so you want to put them on the valve cover like this and just to give you another visual on that you can see the concave part is going to go down over that spark plug tube because if you put it on the other way it, it won't want to go over that spark plug tube so you want to put it on your valve cover so that it goes on in that direction I had a buddy mess up on this so I just want to reiterate that be careful don't don't put these in upside down because then you'll have to buy a new set okay initially you can just put it in with your hands but we will have to force it in later on but we'll just get it started with our thumb there just get it going and you might be able to push it in all the way with your thumb it's uh, all in accordance how, how strong you are I guess but I got that one started now we got this uh, 32 millimeter socket right here and I found that it fits just about perfectly over that uh, spark plug tube and what we're going to do is we're going to place it over that spark plug tube and we're going to hit it with a rubber mallet and push it down the rest of the way and you can see here just how well it fits it's nice and flush with the surface there now before you beat this in just be cognizant of any tubes you might have up here we're going to be putting this over this piece of wood here uh, to protect the valve cover so that we don't break it but any tubes that might be snapped off or anything you don't want to beat on those make sure they're off to the side here and that they don't get damaged so I'm just gonna set this back up here like so and put that socket on it and I'm gonna have to put you down so I can do this but I'm gonna put the socket on there like that and I'm gonna take a rubber mallet and I'm just gonna smack it in the rest of the way and I'm gonna use this rubber mallet right here to do that and you don't have to do it really hard just kind of gentle uh, just hit it a couple times gently and it should go down pretty easily right, we're gonna go ahead and beat it in now something to be aware of 
uh, these will bottom out once they're installed all the way. You want to make sure that all the way around it's recessed in there the same distance because if it's cocked a little bit it's not sealing correctly. So you want to see the same depth of that seal all the way around. It looks like I got a little bit more to go over here so I'm going to go ahead and tap it in the rest of the way. So something to be aware of whenever you do that and also when you're done tapping it in Go ahead and check your seal, make sure it's not ripped or anything or that it didn't get damaged in the process of uh, beating it in. Um, the surface that you're wanting to hit in is this outside ring here. Not this part, but the outside ring all the way around. That's what you push on to put in the uh, valve cover there. Okay, so we got all three of our spark plug tube seals in on this valve cover. And I took a, uh, a brill, not a Brillo pad, but a scouring pad and I cleaned this channel out real good all the way around there and sprayed it out with some brake clean so there's no oil residue in it and by the way very similar to the other one it's basically the same thing so what you do to this one you want to do the other one and oh by the way i'm sure you already picked this up uh deductive reasoning here i took the other gasket out already <laughs> i didn't show that but it just pulls right out you just grab the gasket you pull it right out comes out of that channel there so we're going to take our new gasket we're going to go ahead and uh, start installing it new gasket into the channel there you see you got this little uh, notch here it goes into the receiver push it in and it should fit kind of snugly it's going to be held in place because it's being squeezed into the uh, the channel there So we got this put in, it's pressed in all the way around, so it's nice and secure. Like I said, same concept on the other valve cover, so you're gonna, what you do to this one, you're going to do the same thing to the other one, okay? Okay, so we're going to start out by putting the front valve cover on, and we're going to take a little bit of this oil right here, and we're just going to lubricate these spark plug tube seals just a little bit, kind of help it to go on a little bit easier. Don't get your, uh, don't get the purple valve cover gasket oily but those are okay to get a little bit oily there all right let's go ahead and set our valve cover into place here They're right over those spark plug tubes let's press it in just like so okay you should get some new grommets for your valve cover bolts and uh, and some of you guys are going to kind of find this to be a little difficult it's not really that bad um, I've got a 16 millimeter deep wall socket here this is going to make it real easy to get that old grommet off of that bolt there you can see that that head of the bolt fits right into that socket there and it holds that grommet rather well so we're going to stick that bolt in upside down just like that and my wife's going to text me right in the middle of filming that's okay um, and I'm going to take this rubber mallet here don't use a metal hammer or anything else other than a rubber mallet because you can booger up those uh, threads on that bolt there. And we're just going to beat that bolt through that grommet. And that might booger up your hammer just a bit, but it's well worth it because uh, we'll get that bolt out and we didn't damage the threads there. And there's a chance, guys, when you beat that bolt out of the old grommet into your deep well 16 millimeter socket there, it could get stuck. Uh, once it starts to go, kind of go easy on it. Don't bang it real hard and, and get it jammed up in that socket though. Uh, so just be aware of that, be careful. If you do get it stuck, you probably would just wiggle it back and forth and eventually get it out. I got that one stuck and was able to get it out. So just uh, be aware. Now, we gotta put our new grommet on our bolt there and that's pretty easy to do also and we're going to take that 32 millimeter socket that we had just a little while ago and we're going to take this bolt thread it through like that i'm going to set it inside the uh the half inch drive section of that socket and we're just going to beat it right onto that uh, new grommet easy as that and do that for the rest of your uh your bolts for your valve covers 
very simple also something else that i want you guys to take note of you can see i got the socket on top of a piece of wood so if this bolt goes in too far it's going to go into the wood it's not going to hurt the bolt it's going to hurt the wood so if you're on a piece of concrete or a metal bench just be aware of that okay now on every one of these bolts guys after you put the new grommet on inspect your grommet make sure it's not damaged by forcing it over that uh, that ridge there it should be okay but just make sure you don't want to put a, a damaged grommet on and then have it leak later on and you find out after it's all back together